I've had comments over the past uh, few days of just how much more better, <laughs> much more better, um, this way of presenting truth is. I have enjoyed it tremendously. I have loved studying more. I've loved presenting more. I've loved interaction more. Um, because really, this is what we should be doing. And so this morning, uh, we're starting off in going to Psalm 103. So I, I hope you have a Bible. If you have a Bible, there's some Bibles under the seats. Uh, it's important just to not just to hear, but to also to see, especially to see in your own Bible. Um, because it, it gets you back to, okay, now where was this? I, okay, I remember this. You can sometimes remember it was on that side of the page. Uh, I, I use, I mean, that's the trouble with using electronic devices because that's what I use a lot. And, I, and it's hard to remember, can't say what side of the page it was. It was just in here. So it's a little more concentration that way. But Psalm 103, I want us to, to look at this psalm, I'll listen to it, and we're going to be answering some questions as we go through this of... Who is God? What has He done? Who are we? And maybe what are we to do? But especially these first two columns. Because really, this should, this should happen with every time we read, asking these questions in our life. Every time we read the Scriptures. I mean, okay, who is God in this passage? And, and what has He done? And how has that affected our life, and how does that transform our life, basically? Uh, this is a, a great psalm. I, I used to have much of it memorized, and I have not practiced it, so I, I don't anymore, and I, I regret that. Um, this morning I, I'm reading through from the English uh, Standard Version. Um, so yours might just be a hair different, that's okay. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all, that's is, all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all those who are oppressed, he has, made his known, he has made known his ways to Moses and his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. By the way, praise God for that. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love to those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame, he remembers what, that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field, for the wind passes over and is gone, and his place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, and his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, O you his angels, you mighty ones who do his word, obeying the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers who do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Now, I know that's a long passage. And as we've been looking at who is God, we've been looking at just who he is in, in this. But I want to expand this because who he is also is his characteristics. And so in this, in this passage, okay, we're sticking to this passage, what are some of the characteristics of God? And you say, wait a minute, are they talking about Father God? Are they talking about Jesus God? Are they talking about Holy Spirit God? Yes, 
<laughs> okay? That's, that's the answer, yes. If God is unified, if you have one characteristic, one quality of Jesus that you see, it is true of the Father and the Spirit. All right? There's not a separate, like, Jesus is more holy than the Father. He has more love, or he has more grace. No. All, even the Holy Spirit, all have this. And so, again, shout it out, not shout it out. Right? <laughs> Tell me, what are some characteristics that you see of God in this passage? Merciful. Whoa, that's good. I love that. All right, I heard merciful last, so I'll just write merciful. Holy. Faithful. Faithful. Healer. Who was that last one? Healer. Healer. Forgiving. Loving. Redeemer. All right. I'm going to caution you. Because we're also getting into some of this. All right? He, he, he's forgiving. All right? He is loving. And so you need to say, he's not... Loving, but he is love. love. Gotcha. Um, if if you're not going to use forgive, what what is that? Forgiveness. Okay. Um, okay. Those are those are still what he's done. Okay. So you want adjectives, uh, not adverbs. Yeah, not advert. Uh, I, I don't know all that stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> so compassionate. Yeah. And, and you know, it's it's not it's not like I'm splitting hairs a little bit, but we want to see who he is. And so he is also grace. I think that's where that forgiveness is. Mm. And right mercy. There. All right, and so You got merciful at the top. Okay, so those words <laughs> thank you. <laughs> she, she's my check. Yeah, yes. Yeah. All right. All right, so we see all these things of God. This is just this one passage of of Psalms. Now let, let's expand into what has he done. I'm just gonna write up here. No lights. Hear what you say? All right. Do it now. He heals. Now, I love this. If he is the healer, then he heals. Mm -hmm. All right? Redeems. Yeah, uh, forgives. Thank you. for. <laughs> we had that over there. He forgives. Redeems. You know, and again, some of the translations may have different ways of saying things. Right. So I love that. Redeems. Oh, he said that. I'm sorry. That's right. <laughs> We'll let, we'll let one mistake per person, just let me know, all right? Okay, I'm done. <laughs> Anything else of what he's Love. doing? Love. I like, Jackie said loves in the present tense. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's still loving us. Yes, correct. He helps us. Helps. All right. Who are we? Now look at the passage, okay? I like it. Yep. Dirt. But we're also something else he calls us. Disciple. Children. 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 And what do you say, Charlie? Disciple. Disciple. Servants. Servants. We're flowers. We're flowers. It says we are, right? We're flowers, but actually we're grass. All grass. When he's talking about flowers and grass, what is he talking about? What? Did, why, why is he saying that we're flowers and grass? They're pretty. The length. You know, we are. Um, How long we live, we're. Brief. Real. That's good. Uh, temporary on this earth. But we're pretty. Pretty. Yeah. <laughs> All creations of God are beautiful. All right. Beautiful, yes. All right. <laughs> and so, and so we, I mean, we could expand a lot of this, but I mean, when we when we see this, we have. To, I mean, when you look at Scripture, a lot of times we we get again stuck way over here. We need to be doing something. But as we look at who God is in this. And, and the amazing things of who he is and what he's done, wow. I mean, it, it sends you into worship of him, in praise of him. And that should transform us, though we may be dirt and, and fading 
And, you know, because we are fading. Our bodies are fading on this earth until we get a new one in heaven. That it should, it should encourage us to move beyond this. All right? and, and I really wanted to start there this morning because I don't want us to, to even get trapped in, okay, Father is only all this. All right? And so only the Father. This says, I mean, we're, we're talking to Old Testament, so Jesus has not physically come to this earth. Um, my, my daughter said, well, I mean, what was Jesus before he was born? Well, he was spirit. He is spirit. If he is God, and God is spirit, and those who worship God must worship him in spirit and truth, he is spirit. And we cannot get trapped into the mindset that he is human form. He came in human form. I'm getting ahead of myself. Sometimes I do that. Uh, but this morning, again, I wanted you to understand this. When you read any scripture, Old Testament, New Testament, in the Psalms, Revelation, Habakkuk, Isaiah, Matthew, you, we need to look and see who God is in this passage because that's where we need to always see because this whole everything, existence, is because of God, what he has done for us. And he has created us. And so... I want us to remember that and, and start transforming. I'm transforming myself in this. And, and getting back to this, really, for myself, of, of seeing who he is. Well, last week, Renata's going to hand out some papers. Of, last week, we focused a little bit on the Father. Caleb, come on, help me, bud. And you can see that the, the full side is, again, what we hand out last week. And... And what I did with the Father, I just added some of those, those smaller words of what we, what we hit on last week. And so, this week we're going to look at Jesus, beginning to look at Jesus, all right? We're going to look at Jesus again next week. Uh, it's because I just can't. I can't. You know, I can't condense it. I, I had struggled last week with just condensing it, because we just focused on basically on the Father's love, excuse me, on that. And so we saw all the things who God is. And we could focus on every one of those plus more in every area as he is manifested. He's displayed himself. <clears throat> and so we're going through the questions of the church, questions for the church, questions of, of life, questions of scripture. And so, you know, who is God? A theology study of God. What has he done? Please look here. Thank you. What has he done? We're seeing it already. Who are we? Now, who are we depends upon if we are in Christ, we've given our life to Christ in faith, or we have not given our life to Christ in faith. If you have not given to your life to Christ, you know, we have. if you look on that sheet, you have family, you're not family. You're God's creation, but you're not God's child. I hope you understand that. A lot of people say, well, we're all God's children. Well, no, we're not all God's children. If we're all God's children, then we're in trouble. All right? I mean, or or they're, they're not in trouble. But we're not all God's children. We're all God's creation. But until you put your faith in Christ, you do not become a son of his. Until you put your faith in Christ, you are creation but not children. And so who are we depends on on the context of the scripture. Because we can look at Romans chapter 3 and say, who are we? We are, we are undone. We are wretched. We are lost. We, are, uh, we have the wrath of God lying upon us. We are blood, blood uh, seekers. We are truth mockers. We are everything before we come to Christ. And that means that, that's why this is so amazing of what he's done for us while we were there. But then, after we're saved, and that's what we're going to be really focusing on, after we're saved, who are we? What, what are we to do? <sighs> so, we are going to turn now to Matthew chapter 20 in the Bible. Matthew chapter 20. About two-thirds of the way back. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. We're in Matthew. It's right after Malachi. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are the four books written, the four accounts written about when Jesus was walking on this earth after he was born. All 
right? And then they all lead up to the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so you see a lot of words before you get to Matthew chapter 20, teachings of Jesus. In Matthew chapter 20, we're going to begin down in, in verse 25. It's kind of a, a weird story before that. Uh, James and John were brothers and half-cousins of Jesus. They were rela- related. And, and before that, Mama comes into play. All right, Mama comes up to Jesus and says, Hey, Jesus, you know, when you come to your kingdom, uh, why don't you grant my sons sitting on each side of you? Those are the places of honor. You know, mama, mama wants good for her kids, right? And, and I love this because all the other disciples find out that of the of the twelve or the ten, and they're they're kind of hacked off. I mean, how dare you? It's like I'm sure they're going, it was mom, it was mom. You know, I've used that a lot. It was mom that did that. Why didn't I think of it first? <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right, so we're gonna pick up toward the end of the story, and then really what what I want to focus on here. It says, but Jesus called them to him, all, all the twelve. And, and by the way, when it says twelve, there's usually other people around. It's not just the twelve. Unless it specifically says, anyway. It says, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles, and then the rulers of the Gentiles are anybody who's outside, basically, of, of God, who are not following God. The rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them. And their great ones exercise authority. Authority over them. And so what's he saying here is like, think about the government right now. The government lords it over you. You've got to pay taxes. You've got to do this. You can't do this. You have to think this way. Or trying to get us to do that. All right, so they lord it over them. And, and Jesus is hitting on something as he goes. He says, but it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your what? Servant. Servant. And whoever would be first among you must be your, this translation says, slave. And then here's the reason why. Even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Put it on the screen. The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. So we're going to work backwards a little bit in this passage. So we have it actually happening on, I think, a sheet. And we're all focusing on, on Jesus today, all right? So I'm going to put those in parentheses. So Jesus came, what? To do what? Last part of this. Ransom. He came to be a ransom for us. So why, why, ran, why is that word ransom? I mean, sometimes we just read words and say, yep, that's it. Why? What is a ransom? He paid the price. Paid the price, all right? <clears throat> paid the price. What in, in today's language? What what is a ransom? Why do you give a ransom? You've been held captive. Someone kidnapped. Someone's kidnapped, held captive. All right. So here we are. Wow. We are. I'm, yeah. <laughs> We're captives. All right. And so Jesus paid the price. The ransom was paid. Was the ransom good enough? I right, come on, people, come on! Yes, yes, yes. The ransom was good enough to pay the price. Completely pay the price, right? Yeah. That was an easy one. I was throwing tops at softball. All right. I know you thought it was a trick question. All right. But he he. He paid the price, and there's no other price to be paid because we couldn't do anything. I cannot pay for my sin. Well, I can, in hell, in punishment, with the wrath of God on me forever. For a lie. For a lust. For a murder. For a slap. That's what I owe against God forever. By the way, the Bible says if you break one, you break all the rules. And the reason is, I just saw this last week, and I said, because I understood that before. I understand what the Scripture says. But think about just the Ten Commandments. I, I've never heard it put this way. I was in a conference this past week, and, and there was so much good stuff. One of these things stuck in my mind 
Think about the Ten Commandments. What's the first commandment? You shall have no other gods before me, right? I'm the Lord your God, you have no other gods before me. Right? Okay, I'll make sure I'm right. So, if you break that one, all the rest fall into place. Because if I have, if I, if I'm not making him my Lord, my God, my all, I will take his name in vain, I will worship other things, I will, I will covet, I will lie, I will commit murder, I will commit adultery, I'll, I'll do all those if he's not my Lord, because all of a sudden I'm my Lord. And, so if I break that one, I'm breaking them all, and if I break just one, if I covet my neighbor's car, and it's not just, that, by the way, covet is not, why'd you like to have that car? Covet is, man, I want that car. You know, and that becomes your idol, and if that's your idol, then God's not your God. And so we, we're breaking the commandments all the time, and for one, we owe hell. But we don't just sin once. We, man, we're just, we're sinners. And so we couldn't pay that. We couldn't get our own ransom. And Jesus paid the price. He paid the ransom completely for us. I mean, to me, I, I've got goosebumps right now just thinking about that. Just wow that he did that. Because again, I know what I've said. I know a lot of what I've thought. And what I've done, and I just know those big things, you know. Not all the small sins, I don't count, but he does. Oh. Well, I wasn't supposed to get so excited on that. <laughs> um, okay, so he paid the price. We're no longer captives. We've been bought. We are, we are no longer captives. Right, so that's wonderful. All right, so what else did he do? Go back up. By the way, he gave his life, and so we, we know that giving. All right? It says it right there. The one above that now? Serve. Serve. He didn't come to be served. Now, if a high-ranking government official, I'm not going to name one because then you'll, uh, you know. A high-ranking government official came in here. Pretty much they're ex going to expect some sort of treatment for them. Sometimes we put ourselves in that place and we expect, because of who we are, because of who we know, because of how we're dressed, because of where we live, because of our job, we expect something because of, this is me. Jesus, Almighty God, holy and righteous, had every right to come and be served by all of creation. But he came not to serve, to be served, but to serve. And so, he serves. And this will be kind of the key that we're going to start off today. Um, I meant to put this up a minute ago when we got the ransom. John 3, 18. We know John 3, 16, 17, and 18 are great. Actually, all of them are great. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe in him is condemned already. Why? Because he's not believed in the name of the only Son of God. The condemnation is on every person born. But when you believe, that condemnation is taken away. <clears throat> and so, yeah, that's what I was supposed to do. Now we go back to that. Uh, he came to serve. 1 Peter 4.10 says, somebody read this out loud, please. Be, be a bold person. Dan, as, each, as each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's very grace. All right. Each has received a gift. Well, I haven't received anything. Yes, you have. Once you become a believer, and actually I believe before you become a believer, you've been given gifts to serve God. All right. And so... The very grace means God. God's grace is, is not just, okay, everybody's... Can you imagine everybody being a preacher? We'd all be preaching and nobody would be listening, right? <laughs> or teaching. Right? But that's not what God has. And, and a preacher's not up here in a, in a... I mean, it's a gift to make your kids lunch at home for school or not school. It's a gift to, to, to shovel a walk. It's a gift. You're using something God has given. So who are we serving? God. Who are we serving? One another. One another. TC? One another. 
We serve one another, right? One another. Who's one another? Everybody, right? We like to pick our one another's, but one another's is everybody. I mean, it'll talk about especially the household of God, especially us as believers, but it's everybody. Why do we serve? Because we're God's love. All right. We serve because of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We serve because what He has done, because who we are. Actually, this is supposed to be over there. But we are servants. Slaves. Some translations, which is a better translation. So, Peter actually goes on and gets a little more specific. So, this is that same passage. He says, whoever speaks in our service, whoever speaks as one who speaks the oracles of God. Or stop there. That's not just talking about a preacher, but it's somebody who's telling God's word. And when we tell God's word, it's, it's not like, well, you know, it just says this. You know, This is the word of God, the very word of God. And so when we speak this, God's word does not go out void, but comes back with the purpose that he had set it out for. It is a powerful thing. God's word changes our heart. And so when we're speaking God's word, he said, if you're serving this way, by speaking, even if you're saying John 3:16 to somebody, or Jesus wept, uh, you know, people can memorize Jesus wept, but find out why Jesus wept, and you've got a great story to tell. All right? I'm not going to tell you either. You have to look it up. <laughs> But we speak the very oracles, the very word of God. And so we shouldn't be just flippant about it. But we're, wow, God, I get to say John 3.16 to somebody. I get to say Genesis 1.1. I get to say, you know, Habakkuk 4.9, which I have no idea what it says. (laughs) But it's God's word, right? And so we, we have this and we're speaking it to others. Others. And then also, if you're serving, whoever serves, as one who serves by the strength that God supplies. He gives us the strength within us to serve. Sometimes I don't want to serve. Sometimes I don't want to speak. Sometimes I want people to serve me. And sometimes I want people to talk to No, I don't. I don't... I mean, and that's the thing about God's Word. Sometimes people don't want to hear, but with grace, with love, we are to speak it. With grace and love, not in anger. And so we, we do this. Each one has received a gift to serve one another. And then the, the verse 11 says, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to Him belong the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. You know what that says? Don't work this way, but this way. When I'm over here and I'm just doing, I have a tendency not to give glory to God. I will give glory to the church. I will give glory to myself. I'll even give glory to other people, but not to God. And that's why we have always got to focus ourselves on who God is and what he's done. I mean, just think about that Psalm 103 passage of what he's done. He's forgiven. He's he's completely cleansed us. He's doing all these things. And so that transforms us. Because I can't say, if I'm thinking about that, I can't say, look how good I am and look what I'm doing. I say, look how how good God is and what he has done in my life. So serve others. And it's hard. By the way, Galatians chapter 5, 13, it's not on there. It says, through love serve one another. Because this is duty-oriented. Oh, we are going to get here, by the way, someday. This is duty-oriented. You know, we have duties to do, and this is how we're doing it. But through love, the Father, we talked about it last week, He loves us. It changes us, so we love others, so we then serve. 
others. 1 John 3.18. Little children, all right? Little children. Remember, we who are followers of Christ are little children. So this verse cannot work for people who do not know Christ. They cannot love in truth. They cannot do anything that is in truth, of God's truth. Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and truth. Okay. I, I probably should have done this last week, this verse, but I just, I, I didn't, and I wanted it in. Because service comes from love. We just, we just looked at that. We, as, as American Christians, are so good about saying we love. love. We will put things on a bulletin. Um, we will even be convicted and give money. But it, it, there's nothing real. Let us love, let us not love in word or talk but in deed and in truth. If I say I love you, it better be evident through God's love. If I am going to commit to something, it better be evident by I'm actually doing it and not just talking about it. And that's hard. I mean, because we've all failed on commitments, every one of us. You know, we, we can, you know, January 1st, that's right, I'm going to the gym every day, I'm losing weight, I'm going to read the Bible, I'm going to pray, I'm, you know, and January 2nd happens, and well, you know, I'm going to tomorrow. You know. Then we fail on our commitments. But if we go back to God, you have done this for me, you love me, you have done so much for me, it sparks us into love. It sparks us because he has made me a servant, a disciple, that I'm going to serve other people. And the reason is, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 9, 19, I have made myself a servant. And that word really is there, a, a slave. To all, that I might win more of them. And see, again, this is, this is the perception from the world of the church. Those places everywhere the people have called themselves. It's not true, everybody. But they see not a servant to them, but an authority over them. You've got to be doing this. You've got to stop doing that. And that's what they see in here. Instead of, man, let me tell you about God. His great love for you that sent His Son to die for on the cross. He has done so much for us. Let me tell you about my life, how He has changed me. I am now forgiven. I am now redeemed. I am now a child of God. I have got love. I still have problems. I'm not perfect in this way. But this is how I, I, want, I want you to know Him. And so I want to serve you. I want to tell you. I want to open my life to you and sacrifice my life for you. Because, by the way, I can't ransom my life for them. I can't sacrifice my life enough to send, to send them to heaven and get them out of hell. I can't love them enough to do so. But what I can do is love them and sacrifice and then tell them and show them Jesus and say, you've got to go to Jesus for this. Showing them Christ for the glory of God. And I tell you, I mean, it, I... I, I I love studying for like this and, and looking at all this, but it's convicting so much because I, I get over here and I'm like, I'm got to do this. And what happens is I see others who should be doing this. And so I say, well, they must not be here. All right. And we do that. We, we, we talked about that a couple weeks ago about judging. We love to judge and compare them to who? us. If they're not doing like I'm doing, they must not be this. Yeah. We love, we love that. But we have to have this mindset of Paul's mindset. And it's hard mindset. That I want to be a servant to them. I, I want to love them. 
I want to walk with them. We talked about that last week in, on their sheet. You can see that with God's love. We've got to be among them, you know, and, and have this compassion for them. Why? So that, and Paul uses that I might win more of them, and it's not like, you know, he's not sacrificing his life so they can win them like Christ did. But he doesn't mind giving up his life in service. At one point, he is, he is weeping for his nation, Israel. And he said, if there's any way that God could take my salvation away and give it to them, I'd do it. He had such a heart for other people. But we can't do that. Paul knew he couldn't just give away his salvation. He couldn't lose his salvation. But I, uh, we have got to get back to this point. Uh, matter of fact, go back to, to Psalm 103 one time, please. Where we started. And just the first few verses are great to memorize. Because if, if we live out truthfully the first five verses, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. All right? Bless the Lord. Bless his holy name. All those things that we've talked about. Him. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and, and don't forget all his benefits, what he's done. Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. <coughs> you got to know that if, if we lived our life like that, how amazing this would be in our life. God, you have done so much for me. I've got to live this way. Not be, because of anything else, but Lord, so they can see you. And I can tell them about you. So I can serve them. And just and you go back, and again, we're, this is so small. Go back and look how Jesus served people. Again, at one point he got down on the ground and washes his disciples' feet, the lowest job there was. That's what we are called to do. The lowest to the highest, in our own opinion, serve them so we can show them Jesus and who he is. And what he has done for the least of these to the greatest of these in their mind. Because all need salvation. All need to know the Father. So, who is God? You know, when I just think of who he, who he is, to me, it's amazing. Amazing in his holiness, his love, his, his peace, his hope. Mercy, and, and so I look in the scriptures and just amazed at what He's done for me and for those other people. And I keep on, I mean, because I keep on going through it. I, I'm pitiful at times. I get so petty at times. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why Amen, man. You know, mm -hmm. because I want to make me God. Instead of allowing God to be God and looking who I am in Him, sometimes I'm, I get down because I'm looking beyond this instead of here. When I just look at who I am because of what He's done, it leads me to praise Him all the time. And so the encouragement today is to, to look at the Father's love He has given to us and to see how Jesus gave his life as a ransom for me, personally, for them, especially. Because he came and served, though he deserved to be served. And so all, I can't be a ransom for them, but I can be a servant to them, to show them and tell them about the ransom that Jesus paid. And so I pray for myself that I don't get stuck. Because I get stuck. I pray for you that we don't get stuck. Because we've been stuck. And that we take this with us to the world. And, you know, I, I know, I was thinking, you know, as I was studying, I knew it was going to be 
a little more uh, convicting, I guess, because I was under conviction in this. Um, as I said, someone last week, conviction's good. Because, you know, I am not near perfect. And I get stuck over there sometimes without realizing who I am because of what he's done, because of who he is. And so I pray that, that our, our life as a body of Christ would become a life of servanthood, service, so that we can win some. Some are not going to like it. Some will hate it. But so we can win some of them. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for who you are and for what you've done. God, you are amazing. So Lord, I want to commit my life publicly even more to you. That I can be the servant that people see my good works that glorify you. That we can be this way. And Lord, I thank you for your grace and your mercy because we have messed up. We have loved ourselves. We will mess up. But we will love ourselves over you. I got to pray for your encouragement, your uh, spankings at times to wake us up the questions we need to know, we need to ask in truth. I praise you, God. In Jesus' name, amen.